Welcome to the tutorial about the interface part one. In this tutorial, I'm going to describe the various views, toolbars, and workspaces that exist within Animate and Animate Pro. So a view is Toon Boom's way of describing these gray windows or panels in the software. The name of the view is indicated on a tab in the top right corner of the view. So this would be the camera view, here we have the timeline view, here's there's the, the tool properties view and the library view. So as you can see, more than one view can exist in a given area and you can access these views by clicking on the various tabs. So to see a list of all the views available in the software, you simply need to go to the Windows menu and check out the list below. If you're using Animate, you might notice that a few items are missing from this list, such as the network view, the module library, and the message log. So if you click on one of these items, the view will appear as a floating window. You can close this window by clicking on the gray X here, or on the red X in the title bar. If you try to open a view that already exists and is visible in the interface, such as the tool properties, so we see it here, the software will react as if nothing happened, but that's only because the view is already available. If you then try to access a view that is hidden but available in the software, such as the library view, the software will open it as a floating window, but it will gray out and deny access to the other version of the view, which if you think about it makes sense. So you can really only work in this floating version of the library view. So views can be moved around, and you do this by grabbing the tab, dragging it, and releasing the mouse. So here, the color view is now a floating window. You can resize this window, and you can actually dock this window into a new space that did not previously exist in the interface. And you do this by grabbing the tab. Um, you have to make a distinction between the tab and the title bar of the window. You can grab the title bar and drag the view around, but you can't really do much else with it. You can't dock it anywhere else in the interface. You can't create a new space in the interface. Um, to do that, you really have to grab the tab and then drag it into an area. You'll see usually a white outline that'll show you the shape um, that this view will take when docked. So once this, this you create a new docked area, you can grab the edges of any of the views and drag them around to resize. You can also click on these little tabs to you know, expand the view momentarily while you work in it. And then if you want to see um, the hidden view again, you just need to click on it again. You can also dock this view with other views. So previously, the color view was docked with the network view. But now you might want to dock it with the tool properties in the library. So you do this by grabbing the tab and dragging it over the other tabs. So now it's a part of this area. Then if you want to close it, you just need to click on the X here. If you want to bring it back and you go to the Windows menu at the top, the software will bring the view back to the last place it was before it was closed. So in this case, it was with the tool properties and library views. If you then create a floating window from the color view and close it, when you try to bring it back, it will be a floating window. You also have the option of bringing a view into a previously defined docked area by clicking on this, down, uh, this downward arrow button. So now I've brought the color view back to where it was with the network. So now let's talk about toolbars. There are two types of toolbars in Animate and Animate Pro, uh, top toolbars and view toolbars. So top toolbars are these, these toolbars here that are kind of generic toolbars that are applicable to the entire software, um, such as the file toolbar, you know, the save and the open, um, your edit toolbar with the cut, copy, paste, undo, you know, playback toolbar. So these are top toolbars. Um, once again, you can see the list of toolbars in the window menu by going to toolbars and you see the list here. 
So anything with a check mark on it means that it's already visible in the software. Um, anything below this line is sort of a variable toolbar and it's sort of dependent on what is visible in the software right now. So for example, we know that the camera view is visible, so we can click on this to get the camera view toolbar. But uh, for example, here we have the network view is part of our current interface, but it's hidden behind the color view. So if we go to the Windows menu toolbar, we don't really see anything from the network view, um, even though I know that there is a network view toolbar. So what you can do is click the, the network view to bring it to the forefront, then go back into the same menu, and you'll see here now that the network view toolbar exists. Uh, I think there are a few toolbars that exist in Animate Pro that are not available in Just Animate, uh, which is the onion skin, um, as well as some like the easy flipping and the flipping toolbars. So toolbars work in much the same way as uh, the, the views. Um, you can move them around and you do this by grabbing the double bar at the front of a toolbar. So you can use this to drag it uh, to move it around, uh, to release it completely from being docked and make it floating. Uh, you can dock it in an area um, of where another toolbar already exists, here with just the tools toolbar. Or you can dock it in a view. So right now I just docked the file toolbar in the timeline view, even though you know it has nothing to do with the timeline view, but you can still put it there if you want. So if you accidentally close your floating toolbar like this, uh, you can bring it back from this menu, Windows Toolbars, and that was the File Toolbar. And then you can take the toolbar and put it back where it previously was. So all this dragging around of views and toolbars leads me to the next topic of workspaces. So Animate and Animate Pro has four defined workspaces, the default, hand-drawn, compositing, and animating. Um, you can access them through this display toolbar here, or once again from the Windows menu by going to Workspace, Workspace. So let's take a look at hand-drawn animation workspace. This workspace was sort of created um, with the panels and toolbars most needed by people doing hand-drawn animation. So the exposure sheet, uh, you know, the onion skinning, where you can put the, the keyframes, breakdowns, whatever. So it was designed like that. That's not to say that you can't move things around um, for when you do hand-drawn animation to be the way that you want. And then to save this new configuration, this new workspace that you're comfortable with as your own workspace. And you do this by going to the Windows menu and going to Workspace and choosing Save Workspace As. So since this is a modification of the hand-drawn, I'm just going to call it My Hand-Drawn Workspace and say OK. So now this workspace appears in the drop-down list, um, the display toolbar drop-down list, as well as in the Windows Workspace menu. And if you make any adjustments to this workspace that you would again like to save, like you, you redock the file menu, for example, the file toolbar, I'm sorry, um, and you want to keep it there, then you actually have to save any changes like you would save changes to a file by going to Workspace, Save Workspace. Otherwise, if you close the software and you reopen it and you go to My Hand on Workspace, this toolbar would still be floating right here. So if you then decide that, you know, maybe you're wrong about this, you're not really comfortable, you'd like to go back to the original, you can go back to the Hand on Animation Workspace at any time, um, or even the default workspace, which is the workspace that you see when you first launch the software. So we'll go back to that. Then if you'd like to delete this workspace that you created from yourself, for yourself entirely, you would do this by going to the Windows me menu and by selecting the item Workspace Manager. You can also access the Workspace Manager by clicking on the icon here, which is what I'm going to do. 
So here you can see the uh, workspace you created for yourself, my hand-drawn workspace. And to delete it, you just simply need to click on the minus sign here and then click on the apply button and OK. So now that workspace has been removed from this default list as well as from the list in uh, the workspace menu. And I think that's it for about the interface part one. Um, stick around for the second part of about the interface.